What is going on guys, it is Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite with Inside of Season 6. With Inside of this video, you guys will be provided with the latest and greatest in optimizations to help you achieve those frame rates in which you wish to achieve, and improve the overall playing experience on practically any machine. Regardless of what sort of gaming hardware you're running on, whether it's a super low-end potato PC, or you've just gone and splashed out on a brand new high-end gaming PC, whatever you're running on, we should be seeing decent results across the board. And as always guys, if you do find this video helpful and you are happy with the results, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. If you guys can also comment your results, questions, queries, and suggestions for other videos, that'd be deeply appreciated as well, as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And last but not least, if you guys do enjoy content like this and you wish to stay up to date with the latest videos that come to this channel, whether it be updated Fortnite guides or guides for other games or other content, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification to be notified instantly when I upload. So starting off with inside of the guide, what we're going to be doing is starting off by going down into the description down below and actually downloading the Fortnite Season 6 FPS Increase Pack. For any of you guys who have watched my previous videos, you would have followed this step before, so we're simply just going to be downloading the latest pack. Now if you haven't followed any of my videos before, what this FPS Increase Pack basically is, is it's a compilation of everything you're going to need, configs wise and optimization wise, to follow along with this video. So once you guys have gone down into the description below and actually downloaded the file, place it onto your desktop, and you'll be given a file named Fortnite Season 6 FPS Increase Pack by Panj. With inside of here you'll need either 7-zip or WinRAR if you don't have either of those programs take yourself to Google and just download one of them and what you can then go ahead and do is right click on the file and select extract here. Once you guys have done that you'll then be given a folder on your desktop with an identical name and within inside of that folder you'll then be given two folders and two text documents. Optimizations is the optimizations folder which contains everything we can follow along with later and within inside of the config folder you'll find the brand new optimized season 6 game config files. So to start off what we're going to be doing is actually installing our brand new optimized season 6 launch options. Now to do this what we're going to be doing is simply navigating into the epic games launcher by double clicking and booting into the launcher. Once you guys have booted into the epic game launcher what we can then go ahead and do is go over to the Fortnite tab, go down to the launch option and this time we're actually going to be clicking on the little settings cog next to it and going down to settings. On the right hand side we're going to go down into the Fortnite drop down menu and we're then going to check the box for additional command line arguments and if you happen to have any launch options already in here what I simply want everyone to do is to go ahead and delete and remove any older launch options as if they are different from the ones provided with inside of this video the gains in which you get might vary and sometimes some of these launch options can actually hurt your FPS. So once you guys have cleared all of those out and we're ready to install our new launch options we're simply going to be going ahead and minimizing out of the launcher, double clicking into the FPS pack provided, going into the launchoptions.txt provided, and within inside of here you'll be given the launch options which we're going to use. But before we actually go ahead and put these into our game, we can go ahead and further tweak them to optimize them for our PCs. So the only thing you have to go ahead and do is we're actually going to be changing the number of preferred processes found here. As you can see this is set to 6 and this is what the value is for my PC. To find the best value for your PC it's very easy, simply scroll down to your taskbar, right click on the taskbar and open up task manager. Once you guys have done that simply navigate to the performance tab, click on CPU. Within the bottom right hand side you should be seeing cores and logical processors. For the number where it says logical processors, this is the number we're going to be setting to our preferred process account. So for some of you guys out there it might only be 2, 4, 6, 8, this number could literally be anything, whichever the number says here for logical processors for you, you'll be setting the number of preferred processors with inside of this option here to the same number. So for instance if you guys have 8 logical processors on the left hand side in task manager, you'll set this number to preferred process account 8. Once you guys have customized the launch options, what we can then go ahead and do from the right hand side to the left is simply highlight and drag all of them, right click and select copy. We can then go ahead and exit out of the launch options. We can then go back into the Epic's game launcher, proceed to go down to the text box for additional command line arguments, right click inside of the blank text box and hit paste. Once you guys have done that, we can then simply go ahead and click on the drop down menu once again, just to make sure that everything has been applied. And we can then click off the settings and we can then proceed to minimize the Epic Games launcher. So starting off with the optimizations for the game itself, what we can now go ahead and do is actually install our brand new config files. To do this is very simple, simply navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button and proceed to type in percent app data percent. Once that's typed in, press enter. We can then proceed to go to the top here to the directory root, click on app data click on the local folder and we're then going to scroll down until we find the Fortnite game folder with inside of here. Once you guys have found Fortnite game simply double click on the folder, go into saved, go into config this time and with inside of here what we can actually start off by doing is going into the crash report client. We can delete all of the old crash data files for all of the crashes we've had previously. So to just clean it all out I'd recommend deleting all of these folders by highlighting all of them, right clicking and selecting delete as you don't need that information and it's simply taking up storage on your PC. We can then go back into the config folder once again this time going into Windows Client, and in here you'll find your game config files. Now you might have more than me, you might have less than me, that's absolutely fine. What we're simply going to be doing is dragging this over to the right hand side of our screen. We can then proceed to go into the FPS pack provided, this time going into the configs folder, and what we can then go ahead and do is simply drag the configs given to you from the FPS increase pack, highlighting all of them, 
and dragging them into our game config file location, dropping them and hitting replace the files in this destination. Once the files have been replaced, you've successfully installed your brand new season six optimized game config files. After that, what we can go ahead and do is simply exit out of both the folders and we're ready to continue on. Now for one of the important season six updates which has been found out recently and actually made very easy is that you can no longer actually set the process priority for Fortnite itself. Some of you guys might not have done this in the past or some of you guys that did do it can no longer do it. What you can actually do is you can manually override this and to do it, it's actually very, very easy. Credits will be on screen now to the person that managed to create this easy pack and easy way to do it. So all credit goes towards them. We're gonna double click and go into the FPS increase pack, this time going into optimization. We're then going to go into the Fortnite Process Priority Master, double clicking on the folder. We can then go ahead and actually decide which process priority mode we wish to enable. If you wish to revert this back for any reason to the original process priority, which is normal, you'll simply double click on this file. You can try out these two and see which gives you the best results. Now for the majority of you guys, I recommend setting this to high priority as you will see the best results with that. Some of you guys who don't wish to push it too hard, you might want to go with above normal. But for the best results, go with high priority. To apply this, you simply go ahead and double click on the file. You'll then be given a note notification alerting you that some changes will be made to registry. That's absolutely fine, just simply click yes and then press OK. Once you guys have done that, the optimization has now been applied and again, if for any reason you wish to revert that, you can simply double click on the Fortnite normal priority file found there. We can then exit out of the optimizations folder and what we can now go ahead and do is actually navigate into our Fortnite installation folder to apply some application fixes. To do this is actually very simple. Navigate down to your file explorer inside of Windows and click on it once. We can then proceed to go down to where it says this PC. We can then proceed to go onto the hard drive or SSD in which Fortnite is installed to. For the majority of you guys watching this video, if you've installed it to the default location, it will be inside of your local disk C drive. But if for any reason you've installed it anywhere else, you'll have to go and look for it yourselves. It'll be inside of local disk C drive. It'll then be inside of program files and it'll then be inside of the epic games folder with inside of there you'll then find the fortnite game folder we're going to go into fortnite game binaries win64 and we're then going to proceed to scroll down until we find the brand new fortnite clients with inside of here what we're going to be doing is going over to fortnite client win64 shipping right clicking going down to properties, going to compatibility. And what we can actually go ahead and do is make sure that disable full screen optimizations isn't checked anymore. If you guys have watched my previous videos, I previously recommend having this checked, but for the majority of people now, turning this off often gives better performance than it did previously. So make sure that option isn't checked, but we do still want to check the option for change high DPI settings. We want to make sure that override high DPI scaling behavior performed by is actually still enabled. If it's not enabled, enable it, press okay, press apply and press OK. We're then going to proceed to repeat the steps for the Fortnite launcher application. Once you guys have got those optimizations set, we can then go ahead and simply exit out of the game directory as we're now done with those optimizations. Now proceeding on from there, before we continue on with further optimizing our game, we're actually going to go ahead and boot into the game to get into the in-game settings to further tweak them and optimize them for our system preferences and our personal preferences. So simply navigate down to the Epic Games Launcher and boot into the Fortnite menu. Once you guys have booted into the Fortnite menu, we can then proceed to go to the top right hand side, click on the drop down menu found here and click on the settings icon. Inside of the settings icon, we can now proceed to go into our video options and we can start tinkering around and changing some things to match them to our personal preferences and my recommendations. Windowed mode I'd recommend everyone setting this to full screen. For your display resolution this doesn't particularly matter and you should just match it to your monitor's display resolution so just keep the default for your monitor. Frame rate limit can be set to anything you wish to do so but do remember this will actually limit your FPS so you might not see the full potential of your new FPS so I'd personally recommend setting this to unlimited. We can then proceed to go down to 3D resolution. Now on the right hand side of the screen now you'll see the recommended 3D resolution option depending on your system specs. So if you're on an ultra high-end or a high-end gaming PC, you can set this to 100% just like so for the best results, as going lower typically won't give you a decent gain. For anyone running on a sort of high-end to a medium-end system, I'd recommend actually bumping this down to around about 89%, somewhere around there. If you guys running on medium-end systems, you can set this down to around about 66.6%, .6%, and you can proceed to go lower and lower and lower depending on how low-end your system is, and you'll typically just want to go ahead and actually set random values, apply it, see if you like how it looks visually, and see what the FPS it gives you. We can then proceed to go down to view distance. Now, unless you're on a high-end PC, I'd recommend setting this to near. If you're on a higher-end PC, you can go ahead and set this to medium. But for the majority of you guys watching this video, I'd recommend setting this to near. Proceeding down to shadows, everyone has a different opinion on these. I personally like to turn them off, and turning them off will give you guys the best results in FPS. But if you have to have shadows on and you really don't like turning them off and you prefer the visual quality of having shadows on, set them to medium and do not go any higher. 
regardless of what sort of system you're on. So if you have to have them on, set them to medium, otherwise I'd recommend everyone turning them off. Alongside anti-aliasing, I'd also recommend turning this off regardless of what sort of system you're on. Always turn anti-aliasing off if you can. Textures I recommend setting to match your system specs, so if you're on a low-end system, go low-end textures. If you're on a medium-end system, go with medium. High-end system, go with high. And if you're on an ultra-high-end PC, I wouldn't even bother going with Epic, as the visual bump and performance hit doesn't really make any sense. So I'd recommend going to high at the very top, otherwise match these to your system specs. Effects I'd recommend setting to low, post-processing I'd also recommend setting to low, but if you guys wish to see some of the particle effects and some of the fancy effects with inside of the map and stuff, I'd recommend setting this up to high if you wish to do so. But again, you will be seeing lower FPS, but if you guys really want the best visual quality and FPS mix, set these options down here. But for me, I'm personally going to be going down to low as I don't particularly care about any of that stuff. V-Sync I'd recommend turning off as it causes input lag and you should always have this off on any first person shooter. Motion blur should also be turned off as again, it generates input lag and just some weird frame instability and will take away from your FPS. And I'd recommend turning show FPS to on. We can then proceed to go ahead and actually apply all those changes we just made by pressing the apply button, going up to the settings cog found here at the top, and just make sure that your mouse sensitivities and everything are still enabled if they're not for any reason, if they might have changed, make sure that you do come back into here and set everything up before later on. And for any lower end systems, you can actually apply another fix with inside of here, which is actually to the audio. So go to the audio tab found at the top. We can then proceed to go down to audio quality. You can actually set this to low if you're on a lower to medium end system. And also for you guys out there who don't actually use the in-game voice chat options for practically anything and you don't wish to use it in the future, you should go ahead and actually turn this off to again, just eliminate anything from potentially taking away from any FPS. Once you guys have got all of that set up, simply then go ahead and press the apply button, exit out of Fortnite as we can continue on with the optimizations and come back into the game later on. Now for another brand new and highly effective optimization for some machines, what we can actually go ahead and do is proceed to go back into the Epic Game Launcher, installing the free to use Unreal Engine, which Fortnite is actually built on. For some of you guys out there who actually play PUBG as well, this should also give you benefits in terms of FPS to that. So what I recommend doing is clicking over on the Unreal Engine tab in the top left hand side, and if this pop up comes up, that's absolutely fine, just simply go ahead and press fix now. And what installing Unreal Engine will actually do is it will install all of the other assets and everything with inside of the base engine itself. Now where this benefits you in terms of having decent FPS with inside of Fortnite and PUBG and other Unreal Engine games is that you have all of the core assets installed to your machine from the actual engine itself, almost like a developer's PC. So in the majority of cases where developers are actually optimizing the game or playtesting the game, it's going to be on a machine which more than likely has Unreal Engine installed to it. I'd recommend giving this a chance if you do have the extra space in your PC and you have the extra time to do it. It can't hurt to do as Unreal Engine is completely free and you can uninstall it if you don't notice any differences. But for some of you guys that do, you should be seeing some good gains from this. So to install this and get it up and running, what you simply need to go ahead and do is click on the Unreal Engine tab on the top left hand side, go down to the button found here and you should see an installation button. With inside of the installation button, make sure that you go into the drop down menu and select the latest version of Unreal Engine. And once that's then done, simply go ahead and click the installation button and install it to the same drive in which Fortnite is installed to just to make sure that we get the best results possible. Once it's finished downloading and installing to your machine, I'd recommend going ahead and actually launching it just once, just to make sure that everything is booted up and it's completely good to go. We don't then have to come back into it ever again. Once it's then booted into the Unreal Project Browser, which it will do, simply then go ahead and exit out. And this step is completely done. We can then minimize out of the Epic Games Launcher and continue on with optimizing further. Speaking of optimizations and continuing on with the optimizations for this video, we can now go ahead and actually update our Windows Power Options for the latest and greatest in terms of optimizations for the Windows Power options themselves. So for any of you guys who have watched my previous videos, there are now new steps inside of here, so make sure that you do follow along. We can proceed to go down to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, and this time we're going to be typing in Power or Power Plan. Once you guys have typed in Power Plan, simply go ahead and click on any of the icons with the battery with the cord going around it. With inside of here, go to the root directory and click on Power Options at the top. Go into the drop down menu, which is Show Additional Power Plans. And with inside of here, you should be seeing Balanced, High Performance, and Power Saver. You shouldn't be seeing Ultimate Performance unless you've enabled this already. And if you haven't enabled this, everyone watching this video who's running on Windows 10 can actually unlock and enable this Ultimate Performance Power Plan with inside of Windows 10 to give you guys the best performance in your PC in pretty much every aspect. It's incredibly useful to do, it's highly effective. It's it's free and it's very quick to apply. If you guys wish to see how to apply this, there's going to be a video linked in the top right hand side of the screen now. So if you go ahead and click on that card on screen, you'll be brought to the video. Just take a minute to pause this one, follow that video, it'll be a couple of minutes long. Install this to your machine and you'll be good to go. You don't even have to restart for it to be enabled and we can continue on. If you guys don't wish to follow that video and you don't wish to enable the ultimate performance power plan, you can go with the high performance power plan, but the results just won't be as good. And once you guys have selected it, we can then proceed to exit out. Piggybacking off of that step, and if you guys have done this in the past as well, and you've just enabled the ultimate performance power plan, 
We can proceed to go into the FPS pack provided, go into the optimizations folder, and this time we're then going to be clicking on the CPU core parking setup found with inside of the optimizations folder. Double click on the setup, and again if you followed this step in my previous videos and you've just enabled the ultimate performance power plan, make sure that you redo this option. Now for a brief explanation as to what CPU core on parking does, it's going to be in the bottom hand side of the screen now so you can read that if you wish to do so, but it's important to note that this is completely safe to do, it will not harm your PC, and I've never seen a PC have negative results from this, it's incredibly safe, easy, and I'd recommend doing it in all cases. So once you guys have opened up the setup wizard, simply go ahead and press next, accept the terms to the license agreement and select next again, next, and install. Once the program opens up, you might be notified of an updated version, you can update it if you wish to do so, but for me personally, I normally just ignore this, so just press X if you wish to do so, or update it. Once you guys are past that screen, you'll then be given the CPU core parking manager found here. To start off, what we're going to be doing is going over to system power plan, clicking on the drop down menu, and selecting the power plan we set earlier on. So if you went with the high performance power plan, select high performance. If you went with the ultimate performance power plan, select ultimate performance. We can then proceed to go over to core parking index, drag the slider from whichever position it's set to, all the way to the right hand side and set it to 100%. Then proceed to go to frequency scaling index and again drag the slider all the way to 100%. And if you do have it, some of you guys won't, but if you do, go to turbo boost index and again all the way up to 100%. This will not make your CPU run at 100% all the time so you don't have to worry about that, it's just allowing you guys to unlock the full potential, the full 100% of your CPU capabilities with inside of Windows. Once you're done setting up those options, simply navigate down to apply and then press OK. We can then proceed to exit out of CPU core parking manager as that optimization is now complete. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually apply an optimization for any SSD users. So if you do have an SSD installed to your machine, I'd recommend following along with this option. If you don't have an SSD and you have a hard drive, you can also follow along with this if you wish to do so, but your results may vary and in some cases, you might even see lower FPS. But if you're on an SSD, definitely follow along with this option. Now to apply this optimization, what we're going to do is actually navigate to the bottom left hand side, this time typing in services, just like so. And we can then proceed to click on the services cogs found here. With inside of the list of services, we're going to start by scrolling down and it is in alphabetical order to the S section, scrolling down until we find a service called superfetch. Once you find the service, simply go ahead and click on the service once. We can then proceed to right click on it and go into the properties tab. With inside of here, go to the startup type and we're going to go into the drop down menu and select disabled. What we can then go ahead and do is actually press the apply button to apply that change. And if the service is running, click the stop button found here. It will take a minute to stop the service. And again, once it's been stopped and the startup type is set to disabled, press apply once more, press OK, and we can then proceed to exit out of the services tab. Another super quick and effective optimization we can apply is actually to our Windows sound settings. This won't deteriorate your sound quality, you won't even notice a thing, but it will just further optimize games in terms of loading speed and stop any micro stuttering you might be experiencing. To do this, we're going to be navigating to the bottom right hand side to our speaker icon, right clicking on our speaker icon and selecting the sounds option. With inside of here, we can then proceed to go over to playback. And what we're going to be doing is finding out what our Windows playback sound device actually is. It will typically be the sound device which has the green tick next to it. And audio. Some of you guys might have the same option with inside of here. Some of you guys might be using a different sound output whatever it is it doesn't matter just find where the green tick is and we can proceed to right click on the green tick and go to properties with inside of here we can then navigate up to the enhancements tab and we can start off by going over to disable all sound effects and checking the box what we can then do is go down to the apply button once it's then been applied we can then proceed to go over to advanced we can then go down to the default format drop down menu go into the drop down menu and we can go ahead all the way to the top to 16 bit 44,100 hertz cd quality and select that option so once that's then been set go ahead and press apply press ok Okay, apply and okay and the optimization is now complete another fantastic effective and easy to apply optimization for any nvidia users out there we can actually navigate into the fps pack provided by double clicking we can then go into the optimizations folder and we can double click on the nvidia profile inspector once you guys have double clicked on it you'll then be given a screen that looks similar to this and we're going to be going down to where it says number two sync and refresh and we're going to go down and find the option for frame rate limiter mode now for you guys out there who haven't already done this, it will be greyed out just like so, but that's absolutely fine. Just simply go ahead and double click on the mode to ensure that it's no longer greyed out. Go into the drop down menu and we're then going to scroll down until we find the option for 0x004 PS frame rate limiter 2 control delay flip by flip. Once you guys have found that option, just again look at the number, it should be the 0x04. Select that option found there. Once it's then selected, make sure that the numbers and the name match. Then go up to the top right hand side and apply the changes. 
Once those changes have then been applied, we can then proceed to exit out. And what that optimization will actually do is it will improve overall responsiveness and lower input lag on most NVIDIA cards. And in some cases, even boost FPS. That optimization will help you guys lower your input latency and actually boost FPS on pretty much all games in which you play. So assuming that we are now completed with all of the game optimizations themselves and we're good to go, before we do anything else and continue on with the last step, what we're actually going to go ahead and do and what I recommend you do it's actually performing a system restart, making sure that Windows is on a fresh boot and everything has been applied in which we've just changed to make sure that we're getting the best FPS possible. To do this, we're going to navigate to the bottom left-hand side, click on the Windows button, right-click on the Windows Power button, and select Restart. And that now leads us on to our last and final optimization. And before we go into our game and enjoy the brand new optimizations, we can go ahead and actually open up the FPS increase pack one last time, this time going into the Optimizations folder. And what we're going to be doing is dragging the Time Resolution application with inside of here, onto our desktop. Once it's onto your desktop and for a brief demonstration and explanation as to what this program does, what this program does is it actually lowers the amount of input latency between the hardware in your system, the operating system, and the game application itself. Ensuring that these things have a lot lower latency will often boost FPS with inside of them, reduce any micro stuttering you're experiencing, and just overall give you a much more fluid experience. So to use the program and for a demonstration on how to use it, before you go ahead and boot into any game, what you'll go ahead and do is you'll boot into the program by double clicking, select maximum to set the lowest input latency, minimize the program, but make sure that it's still running. At this point, you'll boot into whichever game you wish to play, play it for however long you wish to do so. Once you've closed out of your game, you'll bring the program back up, select default and exit out. And it's just that simple to use. And assuming that we're now ready to go ahead and actually boot into our game and all of the optimizations have been completed, all there is left to do now is to actually go ahead and boot into time resolution, select maximum, minimize the program, head into the Epic Games Launcher, go to Fortnite and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite Season 6. If you guys have any other tips, tricks or anything else in the description down below, do let me know alongside any results, questions, queries or suggestions for other videos as it is always fantastic to hear you guys' input and feedback. If you guys did enjoy this video and are happy with the results in which you've got from this video, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Alongside sharing it around with any friends, family, teammates or anyone that you can think of that will benefit from the FPS optimizations within inside of this video. And again guys, if you do enjoy content like this and you wish to stay updated with the channel, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification. With all that being said and done guys, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I've been Pangino and I'm out.